This is Earth Files, the award-winning news site with the latest updates in science, environment, and real X-Files. Podcasting in-depth reports beyond the 6 o'clock news by Emmy Award-winning journalist Linda Moulton Howe. The tallest volcano in our solar system is Olympus Mons on Mars. From a 350-mile diameter base, Olympus Mons rises almost 86,000 feet in the air, which is three times the elevation of Earth's tallest Mount Everest. Around Olympus Mons are other volcanoes. Scientists think that Olympus Mons was actively spouting hot lava as recently as two million years ago. With all that subterranean magma heat, it is assumed that water ice in some Martian sites might have melted and perhaps even risen to the surface as hot springs or warm artesian outwellings. Warm water on Earth usually means life, and for a long time, scientists have been searching Mars for evidence of hot springs. Well, a year ago, in May 2008, the Spirit rover on Mars churned one of its wheels into so much white silica that scientists were stunned. The Spirit rover's spectrometer showed the white substance was more than 90% silica. To make such nearly pure silica requires a lot of water. On Earth, the only way to have so much silica is to have hot water running over rocks. The Martian location of that silica is a place called Home Plate in the Gusev Crater near the Martian equator, where Spirit has been exploring since it landed in January 2004. On the other side of Mars, also near the equator, is Spirit's rover sidekick, Opportunity. So this begins those rovers' fifth year of work on Mars, and both rovers woke up from a long winter's nap about a month ago. The exciting goal for Spirit is to go south toward a feature that looks like a volcanic cone and to explore for evidence of lava and hot springs residues. Strangely, in the last week of January, Spirit stopped cooperating with NASA managers for about 10 hours. Spirit didn't send back any record of what it was doing, and when signals were sent from Earth for Spirit to move, the rover didn't move. This week, I talked with a planetary geologist who follows Spirit in order to produce detailed maps of that rover's every move. He is Larry Crumpler, Ph.D., science team member and long-term planning lead for the Mars Exploration Rover Program. He is also research curator of Volcanology and Space Sciences at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science in Albuquerque. Dr. Crumpler described the puzzling frustration of sending signals to Spirit, and for the first time in that rover's work on Mars, Spirit did not respond. Yeah, we could communicate with it. It just wasn't telling us what it did, which is (laughs) unusual. I mean, it always tells us what it did. You know, it leaves a record of what it did. So spirit clammed up in a kind of mystery. Yeah. One idea was something went wrong with the gyroscope, as it were, you know, that tells it what its position is. And so uh, we did a diagnostic on that, and that came out just fine. So you don't even have an answer for why spirit didn't talk back with you guys. Yeah, no, we don't. One idea that was bandied about was that, you know, there was a stray cosmic ray hit, you know, that flipped a bit and confused a sequence and something like that. In all of Spirit's work, it has never done anything like this before where it didn't communicate back what it was doing or move when you told it to move? Yeah, not that I'm aware of. But in this case, you know, it was just like missing time. (laughs) (laughs) But... uh, It just didn't record anything, didn't tell us what was going on. How long did that recalcitrance on the part of Spirit go on? looked like it was between 5 a.m. on Sol 1800 and 2.48. That's like the number one thing it does is record everything that it does, and it didn't. (laughs) Nine hours are missing. Yes. And it is still a mystery about what actually happened to Spirit. Well, as of the last time that I uh, heard anything about it, it was a mystery. Could it be that these are signals that these two rovers are beginning to deteriorate and that they may be on their last legs, so to speak? 
Well, none of the analyses indicated that. That's the interesting. I mean, there's no indication of degradation of the ability to communicate or the antennas to point or their ability to determine their positions carefully. I mean, that that all seems to be totally better than the specification. You are still expecting that Spirit and Opportunity are going to be able to do work on Mars for another year? Well, right now, they're no different than they were last year, other than having dustier solar panels. But even Spirit's gotten a couple of panel cleaning events in the past month or so. That'll probably change, too. (laughs) So those whirly winds have come over the rovers and been cleaning off the dust that you had hoped would happen? Yeah, we don't know whether, you know, it's uh, specifically a dust devil or whether it's just, you know, general winds blowing across the terrain. But, uh, yeah, we must be getting uh, gust now. It's, uh, you know, the early spring on uh, that part of Mars, and so we're getting some dust cleaning events. And if you didn't get these dust cleaning events, Spirit and Opportunity might stop working because they couldn't get enough energy from the sun? Absolutely. I mean, Spirit was so dusty it was only generating uh you know like 25 percent of the power it's supposed to it's basically gotten a couple of panel cleaning events and jumped up 25 or 30 watt hours which is significant considering that it was pretty far down at the time how fascinating that you scientists on earth are depending upon whirly winds on mars to keep cleaning our rover machines to keep them going yeah The one thing that we have no control over is when the panels get cleaned. I mean, initially, we assumed that they would never get cleaned, and that's why the missions were planned for, like, 90 stalls or certainly no more than a year. But the problem is that we learned that can happen, and so now we kind of rely on it. But without that wind blow-off, both rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, probably would have ceased functioning long ago. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they've been getting really dusty. Even the first year, I mean, we were, you know, starting to creep downwards, and then suddenly the next day, you know, we were practically back up to the same power levels as the day we landed, and a big gust came along. And that helped us last summer, too. I mean, Spirit was getting pretty pretty low on power, and then we had this big panel cleaning event, and so we shot up to, you know, 800 watt hours or something, and If you don't get them at the right time, you know, you can die from other things like dust storms. Wow. Now, what are you personally looking forward to the most in Spirit's journey now as it goes into this year? The idea is to finally get south of this uh, area that we've been in for the past year or two and go to a new feature that looks like some sort of explosive center, maybe a volcano. In any case, it's kind of eroded. That's probably a good site for maybe understanding where the uh, thermal energy came from for some of the possible spring-like deposits that we've been seeing in this vicinity. So we want to get down there, and we want to get down there real fast. Could there still be active volcanoes on Mars? Uh, It's uh, entirely possible. Um, The problem is the uh, thermal energy on Mars is more limited than it is on the Earth, but we know that volcanism was quite young on Yeah, I was reading that they think Olympus Mons might have been erupting as recently as two million years ago. Yeah, and then the stuff in Athabasca is so fresh, like yesterday. The real question is, well, what are these small features that you see here and there around Mars? Could be volcanic vents? Yeah, there some could be just, you know, ice-related features, or some could be some sort of strange spring deposit. All springs don't have to be thermal, you know, some of them are... Artesian. Yeah, just like here in New Mexico, we have lots of classic spring deposits. They're not hot springs, they're regular ambient temperature springs, so... um, Osmosis bringing the water up through the soil at that particular place. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, they make these little nice little mounds with craters on top, classic structure. If spirit can get to this volcanic feature this year... Does it have any way of determining anything about the age of the soils around this volcanic feature? Yeah, nothing about the age. The age is something that really you have to bring a sample back to really do that.
okay, but we are still operating under the idea that there has been volcanism on Mars perhaps as recently as a million years ago and that there may be some kind of mechanism that is still heating, even if it's underground, and causing these periodic springs of liquid water to come out on the surface? Yeah, in certain places. But aren't these volcanic features like where spirit is headed and these possibly ancient or possibly not so ancient hot springs, why they are so tantalizing is because where there's warmth and water, we associate it with life. That's right. Yeah, that's what's uh, really interesting. The deposits that spirit discovered during its last field season are some of the best evidence we've seen yet for the types of environments that are habitable. And those deposits are just the spitting image of siliceous center, which is only produced in thermal hot spring deposits. And so, I mean, <laughs> there was hot springs, hot water flowing somewhere there to generate these deposits that we discovered last summer. And that's one of the holy grail environments for potential early life and microbial communities and short habitable situation that generate life. So that was probably one of the most significant results of either rover to date. And I don't get the sense that people understand the significance of it yet. (laughs) Finding evidence of hot springs on Mars is becoming more important for many looking at Mars. Other scientists studying a completely different part of Mars in Arabia Terra have also discovered features they think are the residue of hot springs, largely based on the telltale oval rings that closely resemble hot springs in Yellowstone National Park and Dalhousie in Australia. In a recent issue of Astrobiology, NASA Johnson Space Center planetary geologists describe mounds on Mars that could be an answer to the long-standing question, in its wetter periods, Did Mars have hot springs? If so, there might have been life in and around those hot springs. One of the co-authors on the astrobiology research is Dorothy Ayler, Ph.D., and research scientist in NASA Johnson Space Center's Astro Materials Research and Exploration Science Directorate in Houston. This week, she talked with me about what looked like hydrothermal sites in Arabia Terra. Adding to the mystery is that Arabia Terra is not so far considered volcanic, like the Olympus Mons Tharsis volcanoes that are nearly 3,000 miles away. So we started looking in Arabia Terra for areas that might be interesting, and there was a crater that was interesting in that it, it looked like it had a very shallow slope into the crater that you could actually drive into the crater (laughs) and drive out. And in so doing, you could see a whole stack of sediments. So that's why we honed in on this crater. So we were able to get some of this extremely high-resolution imagery. It's on this orbiter called Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and the imagery I'm going to be talking about is called HIRISE, which stands for High Resolution Imaging Science Experiment. The high-rise imagery is mainly in the visible, so it'll look like you see with your eyes. You can get resolution up to about a meter. It's amazing. We were able to see things that we have just never seen before. And since this was one of the targeted sites, we got high-rise data, and we started looking at it in detail, and we noticed some highly unusual features. And they jumped out at me right away as potentially being related to water because of their elliptical shape. They looked like nothing else we had ever seen on Mars. And those are the features that we eventually decided that the most reasonable analog would be springs of some sort that look most like springs on Earth. Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, that's one kind of spring that forms terraces. And, and, you know, a lot of people have seen those mammoth springs from Yellowstone with the terraces. And we thought we had terraces. Besides the oval and elliptical shape, it was the possibility of terracing that really got our attention thinking about springs. And we had some evidence for that in these features as well. Is it possible that any of the features that the high-rise has imaged on Mars could be active springs yet today there? Well, certainly 
Really, that's a question that's intrigued all of us. In this case, we think the best guess is that these are not active today. And the reason for that is when you look at the full resolution high rise, you can see some small impact craters within the features themselves. And if they were active today, you would think those would be covered up. So they look a little older, and also the surface looks somewhat eroded, as if it's an older surface. We can't actually put an age on it, but we don't think they're present. It's not necessarily a hot springs in the same way, though, that Yellowstone would be. It would be hot in that it's probably bringing up subsurface waters that are warmer than the surface. The other thing I'd like to point out is that Arabia Terra is an area with almost no evidence of volcanism. There's no evidence for lava flows. There's no thermal anomalies. There's no geomorphic features that look like lava in any way. So there's very little evidence for active volcanism or lavas in the area. So we think if these are springs, they're probably more like artesian. What would cause heating of an artesian spring on Mars? Well, an artesian setting is one where the um, hydrostatic pressure and the surrounding topography is such that water from the subsurface will come up to the surface, usually in a low area. The water is not necessarily very hot. It's not like at Yellowstone. But since it's coming from below the ground, if you're in an area with near freezing surface temperatures, it usually brings water that's a little warmer than the surface area. It's not freezing anyway. There are springs that come out in the Arctic, you know, in Greenland and places like that where liquid water comes to the surface in an otherwise freezing area. That would be like an artesian setting. Well, let's go to the $64 million question that (laughs) everybody wants to have an answer to. Okay. If there are active or were active hot springs on Mars, warmth and water usually means life. What is your best educated scientific guess today about if a rover scooped into (laughs) that ground at the Vernal Crater, what is your best guess about microbes, evidence of some kind of life, present or past, there? I think that setting that has had spring activity, whether it's related to volcanism or not, is very prospective in general for finding life if it exists on the planet. And the reason is that Mars is very dry. It's generally thought to have been dry for a long time. There certainly are pockets that have had more fluid movement. This is one of those pockets. What is your own gut feeling about finding life on Mars anywhere? My gut feeling is that there's a good chance that life probably did evolve on the planet early on. And whether it's still around or not, I think there's a chance, to be honest. And life does have a way of finding its own niches and adapting to changing situations. It may well be below the surface or in pockets here and there. You know, I certainly wouldn't be surprised. If there were no life at all on the planet now, if it all died out, I wouldn't be too surprised either. To be honest, what would surprise me the most would be if life never was on the planet. I think that would be surprising, and that would give us all some some pause and make us wonder why. It does seem that life evolved quickly on Earth, and I would see no reason that it probably wouldn't have evolved on Mars. I think Mars had all the ingredients early on at least as far as we understand, what ingredients are needed for life to originate. And you've raised a very good point that I think suggests the reason why there is so much concern by NASA and other scientists to try to look for evidence of life on Mars to establish that life is more universal beyond Earth, correct? Well, yeah. I mean, I think that has to be one of the most fascinating questions that we can even pose are we alone? Are we unique? Or is life something that happens everywhere and in many places and with ease? You know, it's fascinating. There was always a lot of questions from the public point of view about why all of our missions to Mars so far were not equipped to look very much for organic chemistry. It was all of the inorganic geology side. So have we had a fair test of life on Mars yet in any of the missions? Well, you know, that's a good question. Um, 
my understanding is that even going back to Viking is that they did look for organics. But at that point, it wasn't understood how oxidized the surface of the planet was. The surface of Mars is very oxidized. So if there are going to be preserved organic materials, they're probably going to be at some depth underneath the surface oxidation. And it's oxidized probably by a combination of UV and cosmic rays, which can get to the planet because of the loss of atmosphere. Some people have speculated that peroxides have been formed by the UV and cosmic rays, and that may be adding to the oxidation of the surface. Which would make it more difficult for life to exist anywhere near the surface. Well, it would, um, unless the life has found some way to deal with it with a protective shell or something. But what it would mean is that some of the organic chemicals that we've been looking for might not be preserved in the near surface. They, they might just be oxidized, which would tend to break them apart. And so you, we wouldn't find them there. So, yeah, in general, life, as we kind of understand it, if it's there, it's probably going to be at some depth in the subsurface. Well, Dr. Ayler, that goes right to the most recent discovery in the last few months. Headlines have been that below the surface of Mars, in several places, that they have found large chunks of glacial ice. Yeah, very, very exciting. Almost every month, there's some new information that comes out that makes everybody sit back and reassess all their thinking. And it's very exciting to find something like that. Yeah, doesn't it mean that if there is glacial ice below the surface, but not that deep below the surface, that there could be microbes in life associated with protected underground water ice? That's certainly a possibility. That's the sort of thing that we would be looking for in the future. If they are big glaciers, just the pressure of the glacier itself would give you a liquid layer at some depth below that. But even that's unknown. You know, Mars is very cold and it has so little surface pressure that right now liquid water is not stable anywhere on the surface. If they scoop down and they found water ice, would that mean that they might be able to find signs of life? Yeah. If it's there and if they have the right instruments... And if they could get to a deep enough depth. Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week for new reports and new podcasts. That's www dot earthfiles.com